All right, what's up? This is Richie Cantardesi coming to you live from Las Vegas, Nevada. And uh, we're hopping on here another live video. I'm super, super pumped about this one. This is actually one of my favorite, actually my absolute favorite topic. And it is rejection, how to handle objection, what that looks like, um, and and some of the viewpoints that I have on the reality of it. And, and you know, it's it's one of those things. The first thing is this, and, and I want to be clear with these lives is, um, you know, I do provide a lot of uh, motivational and mindset type content, but these lives are going to be more uh, content based, not mindset based. So I'm not going to have a lot of fluff, a lot of stories, and I'm going to get right into it. So the first thing is you have to stop avoiding rejection. Uh, this is something that we're taught in school. We're, we're taught that being wrong is bad. We're taught that failure is bad and it puts us in this little comfort zone. And that's kind of what our whole life evolves and shapes into. There's a certain select amount of people that learn that early on and uh, are able to get out of that mold. And if you're in sales, that's why this is salespreneur. If you're in sales, if you're an entrepreneur, this is something you're going to have to experience there's no way around it. There's no way avoiding it. So number one, stop trying to avoid rejection and learn, learn how to handle it now. If you guys have any questions, any comments, anything like that, make sure to post them now uh, so that I can follow back at the end and get back to you. So stop avoiding rejection. Second thing is you got to stop taking it personally. I'm going to actually share some really funny uh, rejections that I've gotten or my team has gotten, um, but you got to stop taking it personally. Um, yeah, they may be rejecting you. They may be doing that, but literally who cares? There's what, over 300 million people in the United States, 8 billion people in the country. If you care about being rejected, it's because your pipeline is not big enough. Number one, your pipeline is not big enough. All right. Most of the time they aren't rejecting you, but if they are, who cares? That's why we have to stop fearing and, and worrying and avoiding rejection because at the end of the day, who cares? It's a lot like dating, literally. If you're a girl or a guy and some uh, the other someone else comes up to you at a bar and is interested in you or, or you're interested in them, like you can't worry about being rejected. You you just move on and say, oh, whatever, next. And it's the same thing. Like the thing with dating that's really easy is the pipeline is really big. So you can pretty much go anywhere. Um and meet new people. You can go online now. They have all these apps with like Tinder and all these other apps. So um, the other thing is a lot of times, and I'm going to share a story with you. A lot of times people will, um, will reject you or be rude to you because of something personally that's going on in their life, something that they're not happy with, right? So like, for example, you're going to get a lot of these not interested, stop, unsubscribe like uh, how are you a subscriber i'm sending you an email um remove me remove e me exclamation it's like it almost is, is like it makes people immature like really some of these that i see my team sends to me they're they're absolutely hilarious like this guy is the VP of like a Fortune 500 company, and he's re he's writing like he's a three year old, uh, super immature, ridiculous. I, I, my question is, I wonder what he teaches his sales team, right? Like, don't reach out to people, just don't. I mean, like, it's ridiculous. Anyways, um, I've been told that I am a cartoon character uh, and that I'm terrible. Um, I mean, it goes on and on. Like these are some of the 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 really good ones, or they're just the, the the ones that you're gonna experience, like the ones that we always get. Um, and they crack me up. Like literally, I just laugh at them. I, I embrace it. I expect it and embrace it, and so should you. So that's the next thing is you have to uh, expect that you're gonna get rejected. So know beforehand. A lot of people they go into ventures or they go into a, a role or a position and they're like, oh man, this is they have the best product or the best service. Like I'm not gonna get rejected. There's no way. Uh, but they're wrong. Like, and they, then what happens is when they do get rejected, they're not expecting it and they they get it doesn't work out very well for them right so 
uh, expect it and embrace it. When I when I say embrace it, I say learn from it. So if you're sending the same emails and you're constantly getting the same rejections, there's something wrong. There's something that needs to be changed. If you're making phone calls or sending direct mail and you're getting the same rejections and your conversion rate isn't getting better, something's wrong. So embrace it. Learn from it. A lot of people, they don't understand the amount of work it actually takes, right? Like the amount of rejection it actually takes. And if you're if you can take the right approach, if you literally look at your numbers and keep track of your numbers, you can say, okay, every 10 rejections, I get a yes. Every 10 rejections. So it's like almost like you're looking for a rejection, like literally looking for one. I had a guy that emailed me um, and said, and I'm going to use that story, but he said that I look like a, or my name was a cartoon character and, uh, and that's why, and I must be terrible is what he wrote. <laughs> and uh, I almost fell over laughing, but uh, I, I wrote in it, him back an email. My teammate, uh, Mary forwarded that email to me and I wrote him back and told him that we take uh, responsibility and or excuse me we take feedback uh, is very important to us and so um, I thanked him for it and he wrote back immediately and apologized and said he felt bad about it so a lot of times when people are sending these messages when they're sending exp or when they're sending not interested remove me like with a bazillion exclamation points if they're if they're hanging up on you, if they're rude, a lot of times it's because they're having their own personal problems. They're having their own issues in their life. And so they're just trying to, and, and, and they and they feel like it's okay to take it out on you. But if you watched the last video I made yesterday, you're the consultant. Like you're not going to take treatment like that. Like if someone's extremely rude, I will not work with them. I just will not. Like I'm not. I'm not going to do that. I'm. I'm in a place in my life where I don't have to. And it, even if you're in a place where you're building your book of business and getting started, it is a good practice to not care about that right now. Like, don't care. Seriously. Um, okay. Uh, let's see. What do I got here? Um, okay. So, hand being persistent, right? Like, it's such a, a a phrase that we all hear. We know we got to be persistent. Like, this is just something we hear. But I want to be, and the reason I want to emphasize this is not because of the rah-rah aspect of being persistent, right? The reason I want to share this is because when you get responses, whether it's over the phone, whether it's in email, you really need to read into the responses that you're getting. Because even though it may seem like they're not interested, it may not be interested right now and i see a lot of people make the mistake where they 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 take the rejection as we should never contact this person again so there's a few instances and i'll give you some examples so the first one is not interested right now okay perfect when is the right time or when is the appropriate time to follow back up with you or to touch base with you again whether you're over the phone or you're an email um a lot of people say not interested and they're just like give up and they're done with it, right? Like that doesn't mean you're getting rejected. That means that they don't know right now. Um, or, or my favorite is typically we don't do that or that's my absolute favorite. So whatever business you're in, if someone says typically, that means their ears are open and they're interested. Whether they have the time to talk or read an email is, is whatever, but typically means that they are slightly interested that there's a problem there's something going on where you potentially can come in and fill that need right so when someone says typically definitely don't take that as rejection and take that as an opportunity to find out why they typically don't or what some of their challenges are or what their goals are and find out my favorite, uh, another good one, but not my favorite, the other one's my favorite, is we don't have a uh, budget for it right now. This is like one you'll get. Like we don't have a budget for it right now. And a lot of people, whether on the phone or they're in email, 
by the way, if you have any questions, make sure to ask them now. Uh, so I'll get to them at the end. All right. So, um, we don't, oh yeah. So if we don't have a budget for it right now, like really, really what they're saying is they're highly interested. Not that they're not interested. A lot of people, when they say they don't have a budget, they think like, oh, okay. So I guess like they can't hire me or they can't purchase my product or my service. No. Typically what that means when someone says I don't have a budget is because they've blown their budget because they probably have a spending problem, number one. Number two, and they shouldn't stop it with you, right? Number two, they're saying that because they probably want a deal, right? So that's another reason, but they're not necessarily rejecting you. I, I see it all the time in calls and through emails where people think that's a rejection when someone says, I don't have the money or I don't have the budget. Um, so what we need to do at that point in time is find out why they don't have it and what their challenges are, what their goals are. And then we could see if we can work something out with them. But don't take that as rejection. Don't take that as a reason to walk away. All right. Let's see here. Um, okay. The other big thing, and, and I, I, I think this is super critical, especially when it comes to how to handle rejection is it takes it takes 10 times what you think it will it takes 10 times the amount of work of what you think 10 times the amount of calls 10 times the amount of emails 10 times the amount of whatever activity you're performing whatever you think you're supposed to do times that by 10 and that's what it actually takes like people get rejection just to the point where they're like can't handle it anymore because they're not doing the things that we just talked about and they literally quit right balloon before the balloon pops I, I i think of sales and entrepreneurship is literally exactly like a balloon like and but the problem is you don't know how big the balloon is so you just keep blowing it and blowing it and blowing it, and it kind of blows up blows up blows up and finally eventually it just pops and when it pops it just pours when it rains it pours with and with business and all of a sudden you know everything just starts happening at the same time and most people can never continue to blow the balloon they can't take the rejection because they're avoiding rejection because they're they don't understand the amount of work it takes they're not embracing it they're not expecting it they think that everything's easier than it actually is and so the activity that you do Times that by 10, and that's really the activity that it takes, whether that's a day, a week, a month, or a year, or longer, five years, always times it by 10. And the last thing I'm going to leave here, uh, and then I'll answer any questions, which you don't have any, is focus on the positives. Is, you know, we talked about having, let's say your numbers are 10 rejections to get one, uh, to get one yes focus on that yes like have your response for those 10 people whether that's over the phone or whatever but the one yes that you get find out why and then really embrace that like embrace the fact that you got that yes and 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 track it i always say track it i'm a big fan of tracking everything so if you can track it then you can look for it like you're like okay rejection 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 yes rejection 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 yes and so then you're always just focused on that next yes that next positive and if you focus on the positives you're going to stay positive and uh, you're going to be doing just fine. So bottom line, stop avoiding rejection. Look for it. Love it. Embrace it. Uh, expect it. And don't and read into things. Don't don't assume it's rejection when it's not. Um, that's going to be it for today. Uh, I think that covers everything that I have. And I have no questions. Uh, so I am going to wrap this thing up. I can't see who's actually viewing this video but i can see uh i just got i could see a heart and a thumbs up but i can't see who's watching i i can only do that based on comments so hope this really helps you and i'm going to try to do as many of these lives as i can i am going out of town tomorrow and i'll be gone for the rest of the week um speaking at events uh but i will try to on the road why not i'm going to bring my little stand and i'll do some of these on the road uh and then i'm going to try to do them as close to i can at 9 a.m. Pacific time. Uh, you guys go out and have a great day.